Hi, you'll remember that um, I'm making my own version of this particular parlor guitar, my version being um, still, still strong. So I've been doing, doing a little bit of work in between working on various um, commissions. One of the things that I've done is um, chosen the wood that I'm going to use, use for the parlor guitar. For the back and sides, I'm going to use um, Claro Walnut from, from California. And um, here you can see the back. The two, the two halves have been joined, taken down to um, a thickness of about 2.5 millimetres. And one of the things that I've done is I've inlaid this marquetry strip down the centre of the back. Obviously, guitar needs to play well, needs to sound good. But the, but the other thing with a parlor guitar, I think it needs to be pretty. I think it needs to have lots of attention to detail. And that's one of my aims with this stripe, um, say, going down the middle of the back. The soundboard, um, Western Red Cedar. Um, this again, two pieces joined together, taken down to a rough thickness of about um, three millimetres, and that's ready for the rosette to, to go into it. Um, the cedar and, and the walnut combination that I've used a number of times on steel string guitars, and it produces a very warm, mellow sound. And I think a tendency with small bodied steel string guitars is for them to sound very bright. So what I want to do is offset that brightness with the choice of, of my tone woods. And I think the other thing that's nice about the cedar, um, just from a purely aesthetic point of view, is that, is it, that it's a bit darker than, than spruce. And for a guitar that's meant to look old, it's got that slightly more aged, aged look to it. Here you can see um, the, the, the bracing pattern that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use X bracing, as, as most steel strings these days are. The, this original um, part of the guitar has transverse braces, which simply aren't strong enough for, 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 for steel strings. Um, I've worked out the general position of where, where the braces are going to go. Um, I, the, the overall thickness, height, and profile of the braces um, will be something that will develop as I'm working on the soundboard, as, as I'm tapping it, listening to the tone, as I'm flexing it and fe feeling the strength of the soundboard. So having worked out where the bridge is going to go, and that's in relationship to the 12th fret, um, I've worked out where I want my braces to, 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 be, to be positioned, and then from that also where the sound hole needs to go, and of course, knowing where the sound hole will be, that now enables me to make the, 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 the rosette. And there's a little sample of the rosette that I'm going to use. I'm going to have a mother of pearl ring with this black, white, black rope binding around the outside and inside of it. Well, the next, the next couple of stages for me will be to make the rosette in, and inlay that into the soundboard. And then also I need to make an external mould and into that external mould I'll, I'll put the sides once I've bent the sides and the whole of the instrument will be constructed within that mould. But of course you'll see that in the next instalment. Anyway, thank you for watching and um, so hope to see you in part three.